Um, I think if we get someone in like Joe Roden, obviously, like you were mentioning before with Trevor Birch, um, hopefully he's been putting in a word about him. And as well, Gareth Bell should know a bit about him as well, as well as Ben Davis. So I don't think he should be strangers to, to people inside Tottenham Hotspur. So if they think it's one that we should go for, I don't know much about him, but if they think it's one that we should go for, then I trust in their um, opinions. Obviously, he's got, I know he's got like four caps for Wales. I know he's like a big, big tall guy. He's like six foot four. Apparently, he's quite good with his feet as well. And a lot of people are reading a bit about him. Apparently, there's, he's seen as one of the top centre backs in the championship. But, you know, you know, we don't know really what that what that really means. Um, I mean, Carter Vickers was was one of the best centre backs in the championship exactly, last year. So, so. But, but he's all, yeah, he is young. He's 22. And um, the fact that he plays always has a few caps for Wales bodes well. But I guess have to wait and see on this one obviously as you said on the stream Trevor Birch um coming in we'll know a lot about him so hopefully he'll he'll uh, have some input and obviously Ben yeah as you said Ben Davis is gonna he's left footed as well so he fits that kind of mm. thing um uh, yeah as I say I haven't really seen much of him but um I you know he's no screen obviously but yeah. I don't know is he is he gonna come in and, and play straight away I mean Alistair, not, no. Alistair Gold mentions that if we are to sign him, it will be after today and it might be mm. tomorrow or so. He won't be able to play in the Europa League this year. So is there any point? I don't know. I'm not too sure. Well, if we, if we sign him for tomorrow, the deadline, the deadline tomorrow. That's what I'm saying. If we yeah. don't sign him today, then I don't really see much of a point in signing him. I'm saying we can sign him tomorrow. And then he'll be available to play in the Europa League. Yeah. 11pm tomorrow, yeah. We could sign um, him tomorrow. It's still a tight one, though. But yeah, he's he's not too expensive. It doesn't seem. I know eight worth. I know they're asking for eighteen million. If we can get the price down, I know clubs at the moment are struggling due to the situation. No fans and stuff, especially lower league clubs. So maybe we could. Maybe I know it's hard to say. It's a bit. Um, it's not great, but we have to kind of use this as an opportunity to get the drive the price down a bit, maybe, and maybe clubs might be willing to accept a lower fee, but. Obviously, that's how Levy will be looking at it, for sure. We all know how he thinks about these things. Give them Carter Vickers and five million, and then we got a deal. Yeah, exactly. That's actually a great point. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people saying Carter Vickers is is probably going to leave the club this summer. I think with his EFL window going on, uh, it would be likely, I suppose, that he will move out. That could be a great way to kind of subsidise that deal and get rolling in if that is the, the the number one target we're looking at. But has he been at Swansea before, Carter Vickers? Yeah, I think so. He, he has, has, hasn't he? Yeah, now that you mentioned, I think he has. He was there for I a season. Yeah. Has. I suppose he already knows there he'll uh, set in pretty quickly, I'm sure. Hopefully it is a move that he'll be open to. But uh, I think we kind of have to talk about that game at Old Trafford yesterday. Um, mm. <laughs> what, 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 a crazy, what a crazy 90 minutes that was. What do you make of it? I mean, it took my breath away completely. I mean, obviously, the, the way the game started, you're thinking, oh, here we go again. Penalty, 30 seconds. How many times yeah. have we seen that? But you know what? Jose Mourinho, like he's been banging on about the whole documentary, nothing in the game can affect you. And that's exactly what we saw in that game. Maybe last season, if that happens in the first 30 seconds, you expect Spurs to fall down flat, lose 3-0 potentially. Uh, but not not yesterday. Yesterday, we came out and showed what we're really about. I think that was the birth of Hoybier, uh yesterday, really was. Mm -hmm. I think what a performance. I mean, we gave him in our ratings 10 out of 10. And and I think Probably he fully... <laughs> I mean, got more than that. Perfect in every way. He really was. He was. He so was good. perfect. I mean, and the pressing from Lamella in the first half, especially mm. um, the movement from Kane to to fill the gaps for oh. Human Son. I mean, everyone was just perfect. Serge Aurier, what a performance! Uh, Regulon as well. I mean, I can't sing the team, but like yeah. the, the praises of the team, I can't sing them enough. Really, it's just so exciting, isn't it? Would um, putting in a performance like that away to a team who was supposed to be all your direct rivals and dominate them so um easily pretty yeah. much even even before the red card we were creating so many chances we're already two one up um the cracks had already shown in the united defense and it was uh, such a joy to watch and to think all the players we've got coming in the squad as well it's just such exciting times at the moment i'd probably say the red card came at kind of the perfect time for us because yeah. i felt that united were starting to get a bit of a foothold in the game in the 10 15 minutes before but Look, it came. Uh, maybe Lamella should have got sent off as well. I mean, you either send them both off or you book them both. I, I, I thought it was a bit harsh on them not to, for Lamella not to get anything. But having a look at the whole game, Shaw should have been sent off. Baye should have been sent off. So um, yeah, I think it did balance out to some degree. Fully to win. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I missed your, your live uh, watch along and I, I couldn't get on the fan show. I was sitting at work, which look, was a really satisfying experience for me. There was two Tottenham fans in there. There was about 30 Man United fans, so it was definitely an Sorry. enjoyable day because of that. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a busy day in there. Yes, it was quite a few United fans. I love that. Pardon? I love that. I absolutely love that. Yeah, no, I think it, people saying it would have been great to have the, the fans in the away end, but it felt like we were in some sort of away end there. It was uh, a very, very enjoyable day, but... Like, as you say, there, there's so many players still to bring into this team. We've got, of course, Bale hasn't yet featured. Lo Celso was injured. Toby was on the bench. Uh, Matt Doherty didn't feature. It's it's scary, the prospect that this team has. And like, with most of the people I've been speaking to today, it's been the, the kind of feelings about a Premier League title uh, could be a bit sooner than we were expecting. I know I said it on one of your streams last week. But do you actually think we could win a Premier League? Is it possible? I mean, when you look at the Liverpool game yesterday, they're losing 7-2. Yeah. I mean, in what... And City losing 5-2. And City losing 5-2. I mean, pre Premier League defences are there for the taking this year. And mm -hmm. I don't think anyone has a good defence at the moment. I, don't, I really don't think so. In the top six, I think everyone's got poor defences. Um, and, you know, you wouldn't have said that about Liverpool a week ago, but they've shipped in seven goals. So mm -hmm. sometimes when a rut starts, it's hard to, like, stop it. Um, so, look, I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to win the title, but I definitely think we've got a good chance good outside chance i think our squad's as good as any it really is I mean, you've got to say when when you were putting performances like that yesterday we've got so many so many players including you know if bale could be the star of the premier league he really could he's that he's got the ability so if he comes in and starts smashing it out like we really do have one of the best squads out there it's just a question of um you know at the, at, going the other way if Mourinho can coach us defensively uh, in the right way, and we can stop leaking goals like we are. Because at the moment, how many goals we actually concede from open play? But that's Not the many. thing. That's the thing. We need to that's stop true. conceding from uh, set pieces. That's mm -hmm. the thing. I mean, our only defending... one goal from open play we conceded. But the thing is, our defending from set pieces isn't that great. We really need to improve in that sense. Mm. Yeah, we keep conceding penalties and stuff. But so is everyone. Everyone's conceding penalties at the moment. That's the thing. Um, it's it's tough. But I think. You know, it could be the could be the best defense that wins the league because because everyone's just scoring goals for fun at the moment. It might be a bit of stability in the back, and Mourinho can co coach us into that. And maybe we have a really good chance. I think this could be a, our best chance. That's uh, why yeah. I thought if we were to bring in a Skriniar, that would really catapult it us would. up there. It would. Because can you imagine if we have the best defense, we would have the best defense and the best attack in the league, and maybe even the best midfield as well. Like, who who has the options in midfield like we've got? You know, Undombele, Lo Celso. Uh, Moussa Soko, who put in an absolute storming performance yesterday. Sensationally, um, yeah. Harry Winks as well to come in there. You know, the options <laughs> are endless. Mm -hmm. Hoybier as well. So, I mean, we've got some serious, serious options all over the pitch. And when you've got Harry Kane, who's probably the best player in the league at the moment. The best version point. of Harry Kane as well. It's just like, come on, man. The best version of Human Son as well. Son, yeah. Son yeah. and Kane you know, have both never been better, honestly. It seems weird that season on season, it's like Harry Kane just keeps on getting better. And I'm waiting for that season where we can't say he has gotten better, but he keeps on progressing his game. And he's eight goals uh, and seven assists in eight games a season. It is a ridiculous return. And someone on my stream a while ago was saying he's almost the perfect uh, mix of Kevin De Bruyne and Luis Suarez. And it's it's baffling how he, he keeps on getting better. And for me, looking at the Premier League right now, there, there isn't a player in the league who's on better form. Uh, you know, I think the Sun is the top scorer. Uh, but in terms of goal, goal contributions, of course, Harry Kane is way out above everyone else. He, he's added this this kind of playmaking style to his game. And it, it seemed to start in that game against Southampton when we wanted to exploit that high line. So we had Kane dropping deep and dropping into wide positions and letting Son run from deep. But that seems to be something that we carried on into, the, into these next few games. And it seems to be working against these teams, even though they're not playing a high line. So how... I, I, I don't understand how it's working. I don't know how Kane is our best goal scorer and our best playmaker. And he's, and he's, he's managing to merge it all into one. How does he do it? Well, the thing is, Kane is attracting the players and then it just leaves Son with so much space. I mean... It's his movement, isn't it's, it? It's, it's Son's move. It's a mixture of both of their movement, actually, with Kane's movement, Sonny's movement in behind. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is just a joy to watch. I mean, everyone that was going on about fossil football and Spurs are never going to score under Jose Mourinho. I mean, we're scoring more than anyone could imagine at the moment. You know, you're mm -hmm. thinking about... Five goals against uh, Southampton. We should have had much more goals against Newcastle with the chances we created. Seven against Haifa. Another six against Man United. How many are we going to ship against West Ham next week? <laughs> Double digits, I say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it's it's crazy. And one player who stood out for me yesterday uh, is one that I've, I've definitely given a lot of criticism to in the past. I think I've spoken about maybe wanting to see him move on this summer. 
but it, it was Serge Aurier who I know benefited a lot from the, the dismissal of Martial and kind of um, exploiting that space that was left on the left-hand side and Luke Shaw, I don't think he knows uh, that he's a left-back because he was playing so centrally yesterday um, but Serge Aurier exploited that so brilliantly he got the assist of course for the Sun goal it mm -hmm. was an exceptional performance do you think it was the best performance you've actually seen from him in a Spurs jersey? I said it, I said in my ratings I think it could, it's definitely up there potentially the best he's ever performed in a Spurs shirt um, the way he commanded that right hand side was just he couldn't that that space up and down was his space you know what I mean no one was taking the ball off him no one was uh, getting past him I mean attacking wise and defensive wise he was absolutely spot on and that goal just capped off his performance because that's all it needed really mm -hmm. and that goal was just beautiful from start to finish I mean so that, that approval from Hoybe who knew who knew he had that in his locker <laughs> honestly not many defensive midfielders do I mean, it was just top class from start to finish. And I think that really capped off Serge Aurier's performance because he was absolutely sensational. And in our player ratings, we gave him a nine. And I mean, it could have been a 10, to be honest. He played like he had a point to prove. And that's the thing. You really, really should. And I think he really has all the qualities to be a top class right back. We've always said it about Serge Aurier. It's just about his application. It's also about his mentality. It's also about cutting, about cutting out those mistakes that he, that he makes so often. But in terms of ability-wise and, and in terms of... Uh, uh, the qualities that he has, he has the all the qualities to be a top class right back. He really does. He he just he just suffered last year from playing every single game. I thought, yes, Serge Aurier will always come with the mistakes, and and we will see that throughout this season for sure. But I think as a right back, there's not many better than him in the Premier League, and and we all knew that last year. I mean, it's it's the brain farts that really get him, and I think playing week in week out with no break, with no competition. Um, I mean, him, Doherty will come in and will bring the best out of him. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it was a gutsy decision from Jose Mourinho to to start Serge Aurier and Davinson Sanchez against, you know, Penchester United, as we're calling them, two players who are who notoriously give away some, some silly fouls. And straight away, it looked as though it would, you know, come back to bite us with Sanchez giving away that penalty after 30 seconds. But we turned that game around as if we were playing, you know, like a League 2 under-18 side. It, like, they're, they're a team who are where, should be fighting for Champions League this season. And we saw it against Chelsea as well on Tuesday. Had a difficult first half, but we managed to grind it out and get back. How much do you think we're starting to see this winning mentality from Jose Mourinho really have an effect on the team? 100%. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought to the back end of last season, we started seeing it creep in, uh, but it wasn't there. Uh, but now this season, we're really showing our killing it, killer's instinct. I mean, we didn't show it really against Newcastle, but I thought the performance was there and the mentality was there. We just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. That will, that's what our problem is. But the last three or four games now for Spurs, I mean, it's a completely different team. I mean, come on. like You've got to say, ever since we lost to Everton, we've been, we've been a completely different team. Yeah, completely different 100%. team. We played really, really well. And it's not just counter-attacking, as everyone's saying, like on the counter. You've got to think about the Newcastle game. They're I know pressing high from the front. I mean... Lamella, these last two games, someone said it on our fan cams yesterday. I mean, it took for Gareth Bell to come back for Lamella to actually replace him. I mean, it's absolutely good. <laughs> <laughs> you got, no, that's good, I missed that. We're, 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 look, we're actually playing good football. And that's the thing, we're actually playing exciting football. Got to, I was about to say the Newcastle game, it's not like we were sitting back and couch tracking. We create, I know we drew the game in the end, but we created so many chances in that first half. Darlow made 11 saves, and that was all with 70% possession. So we were playing against a low block team, camped out in our half, and easily creating chances. Harry Kane and Son, and they're just, you can't stop them at the moment. And the beauty about the whole thing is that because of the way the squad is, we've got so many variations of different tactics and different players we could use. You know, we could do 4 2 3 1, 4 3 3, 3 5 different 2, 4 4 have. 2. Like, literally anything we've got, we have got the perfect players in each position for each formation. And I actually don't remember a team in the Premier League that has that much flexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I think one of the, I've said it on a few of your streams as well, one of the kind of criticisms we got about Pochettino's time at Tottenham is we were a 4 2 3 one team and that was that. I you know you've like two different, two different very, very ways of looking at football. And one is you, you have your system and if you're good enough, you'll be able to beat anybody using that system. But the other one is uh, you can change and adapt to whatever team you're coming up against and play any system and win using that. And it's two very philosophies that we kind of see coming from Pochettino and Mourinho. And hopefully, obviously, now Mourinho is going to be that one that's going to bring us on to the next level. But I, 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 I honestly do think we have, if you're looking at an 18 or 25-man squad, I, I think we have the best in the league. And I'm getting laughed at from opposition fans for saying that. 
But I'm I'm very, very happy for Tottenham to fly under the radar for another couple of weeks, another top couple of months before people actually t- start taking us seriously as as contenders for for silverware because I, I firmly believe we will win something this season. Do do you think this is the year where we will finally see this trophy drive come to an end? Come on, Matt. You know the year ends in one. You know that Jose <laughs> Mourinho you know Jose <laughs> yeah. Mourinho's second year, he always wins something. So look, I, I we we gotta win something this year. I mean, I really believe we will. Um, and I believe, I genuinely believe that we can put a title challenge together this year. I genuinely believe that. I mean, I said that to a few friends last night who don't support Spurs and I got laughed at out, out the room. But but I still genuinely, I don't care uh, if you if the Arsenal fans, the United fans, Chelsea fans are going to sit here laughing at us for talking about it right now. They're scared. They just don't want to admit it. The fact of the matter is, if, if, if our name was Liverpool or Man City, people would be taking us seriously with the squad that we have. Just the fact that our name is Tottenham Hotspur is the only re- re- uh, reason people if, are dismissing us. If Man United had the exact same squad, same manager and everything, let's say just, just swap everything, just say our name is Man United, we play in red, they would 100% be talking about them for the title. 100%. Yeah, I agree. And like I know, again, I've said it on your streams that like we, we have to look at ourselves uh, as... You know, to kind of uh, judge where we could be this season, but we also have to look at who who's around us and Liverpool and City. I said we were we we're so far behind them, but seven two to Villa, five two to Leicester. As we were talking about, they're they're dropping points. And it, it was Jamie Carragher who said yesterday that we could see another Leicester situation this season. And to come from him, who's obviously so so invested, so devoted to Liverpool, who who were seen as the the runaway contenders for this season's title, the fact that he's coming out now and saying it's 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 anybody's title. I know Everton uh, probably looking the, the surprise contender for that this season, but. This, this it, we really are in, in in a situation where anybody can win this Premier League title, and as you say, the year ending of one Jose Mourinho's second season, all the omens are pointing to us. But it, it feels like it is something much more than that, and it's something kind of long term being built at Tottenham with like Tongi and Dumbley becoming. He's almost a new signing for us this season. He's only twenty two. Uh, you've Giovanni Lo Celso, Deli Ali, uh, and a number of others regular as well. They're, they're such young players, and this what Mourinho usually does is he, you know, he builds a team, he wins a title, and he leaves. But what he's building at Tottenham is something long-term. He said he reinvented himself, and I really think we're starting to see this. Do, do you think Mourinho could be a long-term manager for us? I mean, I heard I heard you mention it the other day. Um, I think, was it on our fan cams or one of your videos? I can't remember. You said that you really believe that he can be a long-term manager, and I actually believe that too. I mean, I don't see why not. If he builds something special at Spurs, why? where else has he got to go? Like, seriously, because he's been at... He's been at Real Madrid. He's been at Chelsea twice. He's been at Man United. He's been at Inter Milan. I mean, the guy's done it all. He's done it all. And I, never, never, he's never done it long term. though. That's what I'm saying. So I think he wants to do something long term. I really think he does. And I think if he puts a, away a title challenge this year and we have another strong year next year, if nothing goes poisonous like it usually does at some of his clubs, then I don't see why he'll leave. It really does don't. go poisonous though, for some reason. That's why does I'm... it all go? Why does it go poisonous all the time? I don't know. That's the, that's another question, isn't it? I mean, if it if he can keep it free of this poison, then I don't know. But usually he has like big stars and big names in his team. And I know bigger chairman as well and big battles. egos in his team. I don't think you have those egos at Tottenham Hotspur. I know you have got Harry Kane, you have got Son who are world class players, but they don't come across to have those egos, you know, like your Paul Pogba's, like your Eden Hazards, you know, these kind of players that have kind of big egos. I don't think you have that at Tottenham. And you talk mm-hmm. about bringing in the right players with the right mentality. I think that that has a lot to do with it as well. And also you've got someone like, um, say, he, when he was at Chelsea, you know, under Roman Abramovich, who's obviously at the time when he first got sacked from Chelsea, he, he was wanting, you have to win the league every other game, sack, win, win, win. Like at Spurs, you could probably have a year where he finishes like third or fourth, and leave you probably like, all right, it's not going to sack you for that. But like, if we, if we, if we, if we're continuing to challenge at the top, I think he would be. He would. I think it, it, all he needs to do is finish in the top four, and Levy won't sack him because all Levy wants is that Champions League money coming in. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Obviously, a league title would be brilliant, and to win the league title year on year, but that's not realistic at the end of the day. I mean, if Mourinho stays in the top four, there's no chance uh, Levy's getting rid of him. Yeah, and like, speaking of bringing Champions League football back in, look, we've had we're obviously in the Europa League for this season. It's it's not where we want to be, but we've managed to attract players like Bale and Regulon. We've managed to get clever signings over the line in in Hoybier, Doherty, and Vinicius, and we we were so close to getting that Milan Skriniar deal over the line as well. And as far as we know, he was willing to join Tottenham. If we have that pull factor now, as a Europa League team who 
had or one of our worst years in about five or six years last year. If we have that pull factor now, what what level of player do you think we can attract to the club next season when we are back in the Champions League and if we do bring in a trophy? We're not a Europa League side. We're really not. I mean, they like they like to consider us as one because we kind of ruin their top four, top five party or whatever it is. I mean, but Tottenham are not are not a top uh, Europa League side anymore. We are a Champions League side. We got to the Champions League final last year or two, whatever it was. Now, I mean, yeah, it was too pain, too painful for me to think about that Champions League final. But look, yeah. we got to the Champions League final. We got the best stadium in the world. We got the best training ground in the world. We got the most decorated manager. Um, in recent times at the helm. We've got the one of the best squads in Europe. I mean, this year in the Europa League, I genuinely believe it's just a one-off. And I think... Mm -hmm. I think Superstar and Bale as well. I know. Club. I mean, you, you've got to say that we got to be one of the favourites to finish in the top four this year. I know the odds with the bookies don't, don't reflect that. And I, I think that's... At, Absolutely. Money on Spurs didn't even top four. Because mm -hmm. there's good odds. I agree. I completely agree. I think our squad's the strongest out. When you look at United and Chelsea at the moment, I know Chelsea invested heavily in Stan and are obviously looking pretty decent. But I think we actually have better options than them. Even even in their signings, I think we have better players than them. I really do. And I think uh, we are have probably more settled team. We were a better manager. People forget these guys have Oli and Lampard in charge. These guys have never done anything in management. We have Jose Mourinho who's been there, he knows exactly how he is to win football matches. And this that could give us the edge when it comes to these when it comes to these um, when everyone has such good squads. And also when you look at it, all these uh, Chelsea man Chelsea fans and Man United fans being like, oh Jose's finished, he's a dinosaur, doesn't know how to play football anymore. This just proves if you give Jose the players that he wants, not that the players you want him to have, the players that he wants he is still one of the best managers in the world, and he's proved that over the last week, um, definitely the last two weeks. I mean, the way he's transformed this club is just sensational. And Man United fans have got to be so jealous with the way things are going because, you know, they brought him into the club. Woodward didn't treat him with respect at all, didn't give him the players he wanted. If, mm. if Woodward would have given Mourinho the players that he wanted, United would have, could have had a, a Premier League title by now, post Fergie. For sure. I mean, that, that squad that Mourinho brought to second in, in the Premier League, I think we're only really starting to realise now just how poor that is and what an achievement it was for Mourinho. You know, at the time he said it was his best achievement in management. We all laughed at him, but I, I think he was spot on with that. And what, what the interesting thing for me is, um, I was watching, there's a, a special on Netflix, I think it's called The Coach's Playbook or something like that. Yeah, and I, I saw Mourinho, that. Do you see that? And it's, I, honestly, I fell in love with Mourinho even more in that, but... What I think was really, uh, really interesting was what, during his time at Porto, obviously they didn't have the finances there and he was getting in cheap, clever signings. And as he progressed in his career, it became he wanted the marquee signings. He wanted the best player in the world in, in every position. But, you know, he's, he's gone back to Tottenham now and he seems to have reverted to that initial uh, yeah. philosophy that he had. He's getting in these clever deals, he's getting Hoybeer. And I know Hoybeer and Darty such good signings. Is are we, Do you think we're going to see this kind of... Uh, underdog success, I suppose you could put it, that we saw with Mourinho at Porto. I mean, they won a Champions League. C could there be something similar coming at Tottenham because he has gone back to that type of management? I mean, I I hope so. I really hope so. But I, I can just feel something special brewing here. I can really feel something really special. And, and I, for one, and I think everyone in the Spurs fan base are right on the Jose Mourinho bandwagon and not just the Jose Mourinho bandwagon, but the Daniel Levy bandwagon as well, because Daniel Levy commands a lot, a lot of respect of what's going on right now. Cause everyone knows I for one has dug into Daniel Levy many a time, but him and Jose Mourinho deserve the utmost respect and, the, and all the plaudits uh, because the way they have got us back to where we, I wouldn't say where we belong because we're not there just yet. I think mm. we've got to give it, Give it until until January to see if this consistency continues. But the way things are looking, yeah, I, I do believe that we we could be onto something really really special here. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. It it would be magical if that was uh, something that we that, that we could achieve. And you're, you're talking about the mentality of the players. I'm not sure if you saw Pierre Emil Hoybier was talking today uh, about kind of where we are as a squad, and he said uh, he's happy with the progress. Basically, he said we're happy. He's happy with the progress we've made, but we're nowhere near where we want to be. And if he says that after winning 6-1 at Old Trafford, after knocking Chelsea out of the Carabao Cup, like the ambitions of these players could be even far greater than what we're, we're thinking of now looking at it. So we, we saw him being a leader on the pitch yesterday. I don't know if you saw the clip on Twitter of uh, Serge Aurier winning a tackle and Hoiberg going over and like, celebrating in his face as he's dribbling away with the ball. 
just how good, like, we're looking at how, how good Hoybier is on the pitch. How good a leader could he be for us? And is he someone who could wear that armband in the future? 100%. I think, I think we've got potential leaders all over the pitch now. I think Hoybier's one, Eric Dyer's one, obviously Hugo Lloris is one, Harry Kane's one. Um, you know, even Giovanni Lacelso puts himself about and, you know, mm -hmm. he's not a leader in terms of like a vocal leader, but he leads by example, if you know what I mean. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think we've got that spine in the team that really, really have that leadership streak in them. You know, Gareth Bale as well. Um, he might not be a leader like your kind of classic leader, but the, the things that he's done in the game makes people look up to him as a leader. So I think that we've got that kind of spine in our team that have really got that leadership streak in them so yeah i, mm. I completely agree like hoibier i think he definitely could be a captain definitely 100 i completely agree he's so vocal and he's he's always talking to the players he's talking to everyone around him about what he where he wants him to go and what he wants him to do and uh he doesn't he doesn't just speak as well your forms is like he's always the he's the first one to put the most amount of effort in you know how many tackles mm. did he put in yesterday how many interceptions did he make he where he's always trying to players um, be on the front foot so you know he's he was a joy to watch yesterday he really was and you know he after the first game and there were a lot of question marks off the Everton game is this guy going to be ahead of the chicken for us but we're seeing the real Hoybier now and what he can really bring to the team and you know I spoke to a lot of Southampton fans or a few of them anyway before, uh, when we signed him and a lot of them weren't even bothered of him coming to Tottenham March I thought it was a weird one you know being being their captain being their yeah. captain and they were they were saying to me he's a headless chicken um he's great if you just want him to win the ball and be combative in midfield but the guy can't play football whatsoever i mean oh, you proved that wrong yeah. <laughs> he, proved, he proved them all wrong against man united that's for he sure because did, that guy, yeah. he was playing passes over the top of players he was playing through balls to serge Aurier. i mean the guy a 10 out of 10 he performance play. he, can, he play. can play football mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, look, it was, it was helped a lot, no doubt, by, by the Man United midfield. They were just so passive, they were so lacklustre. Um, I know if you heard me say, but I, and I know this sounds like some sort of a joke, but I honestly did not know Nemanja Matic played yesterday until <laughs> I was watching Match of the Day last night. I had not a clue he was on the pitch. Um, it was weird that they brought Bruno Fernandes off at half time as well. I thought Pogba was very poor and probably should have uh, been the one taken off. But it's, it's so encouraging to see a player like, I know Sissoko and, and, and Ndombele, of course, played a part in it as well, but... He, he almost dominated that game on his own. It was almost him against that Man United team and, again, helped with the, the red card. But the way the way we spread the pitch, I think, with Regalon and Aurier, I know a lot in that first half, Aurier had so much space out on the right-hand side. The way we spread that pitch made it as wide as possible. We kind of held a deep line where our attackers were on the last line. Hoybier was so important to us in, 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 I suppose, making use of that, that wide attack that we did have. He's picking out so many outstanding passes and I, I don't think we can underestimate just what he can bring bring to Spurs in the future. Um, but lastly, before I let you go, um, from Ichi, who is our best signing uh, this window and what are we going to win this season? <sighs> what? Well, we haven't even seen Gareth Bell play yeah, exactly. yet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, beneath this. Um, yeah. I'm going to go so far, I'm going to go Hoybier. I think mm -hmm. um, he's made the most impact so far um, out of everyone. Look, it's only been a couple of games since they've all joined, so... Um, hopefully I'll be saying Gareth Bell because if Gareth Bell can hit, hit the heights that we know he can hit, um, we're definitely talking about a title challenge this I, year. I think in terms of importance of the a player that we've been missing for so long, Hoibier. I think it's got to be Hoybier. Yeah. I think it's got to be Hoybier. Missing that steel, that leadership in centre midfield, that um, that physicality. We've been such a soft touch ever since Wanyama got injured. It's been yeah. so easy to bully us. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get that back in the game now. I think that he's a player we've been missing for so long. And I think he's going to be even better than Wanyama, to be honest. That's why I, I mean, feel. Yeah, I completely agree. And it's like that that steel in the middle that we've missed for so long and that kind of... And the tactical fouls as well, which we haven't seen in so long since, like, the prime potch days. I mean, it's all coming back and we're playing football better than ever. I mean, that that performance yesterday was probably better than any potch performance. I, I'm not even joking. If you look at yeah. even stats now, like, we... we it's it, numerically as well. We've got we're making more presses, more tackles. We're being higher at the pitch. It's being shown because obviously, in the last couple of years of uh, Pochettino, was shown how the pressing's been going down. We're not doing as many high high intensity presses, but we're doing that a lot more now. We're sprinting more, um, so it's all coming back in back into play. And this is really exciting. No, it's, it's quite disappointing that we're almost in a position now where we're saying Daniel Levy was right to sack Pochettino. Things are going so well. Um, he seems to have turned his club around, and you know, I know Jake Roth was on your your fan cams quite a bit. He was on here a while ago, 
and he was saying he thinks Daniel Levy is, is set to make Tottenham the biggest club in the world and oh, it's almost hard to disagree with that with the way things are going with these all these, these deals and the stadiums and the facilities and all this um, but look definitely going to be very soon <laughs> yeah look uh, guys thank you very very much for joining uh, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on the channel um, have as, as always and I hope to talk to you soon on, on your own channel thanks a million guys have a nice one man everyone donate come on come on everyone yes. thanks very much nice one mate see you guys